अशा मी बोलण्यात आनंद डिस्टिंगिश गेस्ट मेंबर्स ऑफ द मॉडी एंड एसोसिएशन ऑफ सर्जन्स पॅथोलॉजिस्ट रेडिओलॉजिस्ट सर्जन्स अँड डॉक्टर्स अस्सलाम अलैकुम अँड अ व्हेरी गुड इव्हनिंग टू यू ऑल आय एम डॉक्टर अली जादी आय विल बी मॉडरेटिंग दिस इव्हनिंग इट इज माय प्लेजर टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस इव्हनिंग्स प्रोग्राम दिस गॅदरिंग इज टू कंडक्ट द फर्स्ट सीएमई ऑफ द मॉडी एंड एसोसिएशन ऑफ सर्जन्स फॉर द इयर 2019 डन इन कोलॅबोरेशन विथ ट्रीटर हॉस्पिटल एन इव्हेंट सच एज दिस इज अ सोर्स ऑफ ग्रेट प्राइड अँड मोर इम्पॉर्टंटली एडव्हान्सेस द मेडिकल कम्युनिटी इन द मॉलडिव्स and for this i thank our panel and our organizers the title of today's cme is granulomatous mastitis pathological findings can guide clinical management <coughs> our panel comprises of three well respected and accomplished doctors whose insights will i'm sure contribute to a greater understanding of granulomatous mastitis allow me to introduce our first speaker dr abdul obaid having worked in three of the largest hospitals in maldives dr obaid successfully continues with immense contribution to the development of the surgical services in the Maldives and is just one of our most established and respected surgeons and an example to his peers. He was the head of surgery in IGMH Hospital and Edeke Hospital before moving to Treetop Hospital where his services garnered public trust for this relatively new but state-of-the-art hospital. He is also a key figure in the organization of this event. Now I would like to respectfully invite Dr. Ubaid to take the podium. Dr. Ubaid. Good afternoon. It is very, it's, it's a good, good evening, okay. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be here just facing uh, great people like you. Um, all surgical fraternities here and including radiology, pathology and our uh, future surgeons. And also would like to thank uh, uh, Maldivian Association of Surgeons and Treetop Hospital for providing this uh, platform uh, for this intellectual gathering and interaction also. Uh, I hope we all get uh, benefit from this CME uh, and that could uh, reflect, uh, I'm sure that is going to reflect on our practice too, because today we are going to learn a very important uh, information about very prominent problem in our, com our practice uh, that is uh, granulomatous mastitis. Um, as I said, uh, in our practice as surgeons, radiology and pathology or all medical fraternities, uh, there are many cases of inflammatory conditions of breast. Some are simple abscess and other hard lumps with uh, severe inflammation inflammatory conditions and that also the most disturbing problem is some of cases are very recurrent. I mean they come back with uh, recurrent infection and it is very very hard to patients to tolerate that and uh, as we know um, in Maldives whenever there is a difficult condition then everybody would, would like to go to abroad and get treatment from there. So this is one of the condition. Uh, most of our patients, if it is recurrent, then they ask for referral abroad. Uh, as we know, uh, as I said here, granulomatous mastitis is an inflammatory condition of the breast, presents with painful lump, uh, presents with painful lumps, and generally affects young parents women. Uh, this condition was actually dis uh, described in 1972 by Kessler and Waltz. Uh, in the Maldives, uh, uh, many cases, I think we also, as surgeons and radiologists and pathologists, I think we have seen many of these conditions. Uh, uh, but because we are not doing uh, any studies or any um, researches on this field, that is one of the things we are missing here actually. We don't know actual numbers. That is the saddest thing here. We are not learning from our databases, our hospital um, records. This is actually very, very 
I mean, the resourceful source we all we have in all hospitals, but we are not using it. That is the saddest thing here. Uh, breast abscess, especially, um, I, I'm, I'm just uh, in this slide, uh, just enumerizing, I mean, just briefing about uh, in Maldives what exactly we do in case of breast abscess. For example, uh, mastitis in young women, especially uh, 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 young mothers who have been uh, first time mother. So they usually um, have breast abscess. I have seen many of these guys, I, I'm very sure all of surgeons here see in many conditions that they have a uh, uh, huge breast abscess with um, engorge. Uh, that is because for many, many things I understand. For example, there are grandmothers or elderly people who, who are in the family. Actually, they uh, advise the young mother to do some kind of hot fermentation and then also they, um, I mean, they discuss some kind of traditional medicine for applying on, on the breast. So actually that condition may lead to huge breast abscess formation. I have seen many of those cases. I think I'm very sure all surgeons here have seen that. So probably uh, uh, because of this patient comes to the first, I think these cases uh, seen by gynecologist mainly because they are the people who deliver the uh, mother. So, uh, so they go to the gynecologist. The gynecologist will see the patient and then they will say, okay, go to the surgeon. So after two, three days, then they come to the surgeon and the surgeon will do investigation. So that's why, I mean, presentation is a little bit delayed because of this confusion, what exactly they have to do in case of breast abscess. There are many cases I've seen come into very late stage then they full born, I mean, whole breast is uh, completely eroded with abscess and they then we have to do um, uh, incision drainage and that condition will remain for uh, one month or two months and then patient will be uh, um, at the end then ask for going abroad. That's the usual scenario in, in the world. <laughs> um, as I said, grandmasters uh, is rare. Uh, but the thing is, however, there is a, uh, uh, some cases, especially um, last 12 years, I think uh, many, uh, I have in my practice, I have noticed around more than 10 cases of granulous mastitis. Uh, usual scenario is this patient will come with a hard lump in the lump in the breast, and then uh, we do usual investigations and uh, probably then we first describe some, uh, prescribe some medications antibiotics and then after that patient come back with abscess formation then we do incision drainage and then um, a patient come back once again with recurrence of abscess and then the scenario goes on. The problem here is we are not diagnosing the condition. That is the main problem here. We are not thinking about this case could be granulomous massage case. Okay, the usual scenarios, as I said, then this patient will be frustrated and then they ask for going abroad. I have seen many cases who went abroad and they have done wide local excision, they closed the wound. In some cases with the TB, uh, PCR positive patients, even negative also, they, in, from India, from uh, neighboring countries, they offer uh, empirical TB treatment also. I have seen some cases underwent this kind of treatment for six months or nine months of TB treatment, they come back once again. And uh, I've seen many also cured. I mean, they, they have a good uh, resolve of their condition. But there are other cases. Um, after TB treatment also, they have recurrence. So that's why we have to understand there is something other than tuberculosis causing this granulomas mastitis. That's why this presentation today we are presenting here. In Treat of Hospital, last um, maybe four months, I think, we have found five cases of granulous mastitis, and we are able to diagnose the cause condition because Dr. Mirso, Mirs, uh, Miro is here. He have he had taken very good um, uh, interest on that diagnosing the condition, and he found very good interesting findings, I think his presentation will be very, very interesting for you all. 
Uh, okay, my my uh, aim here is to, to present some um, overview on uh, granulous masses. So I have done some literature review about um, granulous masses because it is not very well known condition here. As we said, uh, um, even if it was 1972, it was described, but then there are many, there are no much information provided after that. But when I saw the literatures, um, when I uh, when I searched the literatures, the NCBI, uh, PubMed, and Google Scholar, there are many articles uh, describing the condition uh, of granular masses in different uh, different uh, ways. For example, there were clinical trials, three clinical trials were there, and there are 174 journal articles talking about granular mastitis and then there is one systemic review and then 24 reviews. So that means this condition is actually uh, gaining it is momentum. I mean, it's this, there is a, a interest of other people to study this, this condition. So this is also very important. We also, because this is one of the most chronic condition we are also having. So it is interest to study this uh, and present this uh, literature review. Okay. So, um, because 179 articles were there, but then I have selected, um, I have applied some uh, selection criteria on those articles. So, I have selected around 10 articles which talks about, which is um, recently, recent studies, I mean last five years studies. And then um, it, it describes uh, uh, pathological, uh, pathology of granular mastitis and also uh, it gives some idea for the management of those this granular mastitis. So I, I have selected from those these uh, ten articles. So following, I'm going to present what information I got from those uh, ten articles. First of all, uh, prevalence. Let's say um, maybe this is interesting uh, table, but this could this may not be very very accurate because. Uh, uh, some cases may be, uh, it's not, some studies may not represent all of the, I mean, you can't say USA in 2000, I mean, in, from 1994 to 2012, there are only 21 cases. But this is interesting because the, the case we are presenting here, let's say uh, New Zealand, in, tw in 27 years, there was only 18 cases. Just, uh, uh, just imagine, I mean, this hospital, that's a newly open hospital. Um, it's not very, very, very famous. I mean, this is very famous hospital, but it, within four months, we got five cases of granular mastitis. So just imagine how many cases gone to, the, gone to IGMH or ADK hospital. It must be a lot, right? So um, this, these are the <coughs> figures, but it may not be, as I said, it's very, very, very accurate, but this is somehow we we imagine how is the condition. So I say this is just a growing condition. Okay, demographics. Uh, uh, we say that uh, it is very rare uh, finding in grand masses in men, but it also there are some studies I've selected from these ten studies. There are some cases, for example, um, there are one case uh, who had. Grand masters in a in in a man, and then in New Zealand also we found that in New Zealand study there was one uh, transgender person who had granulous mastitis. So what I say is yes, it is common in men in women, but it also may uh, may present in men also. And the age is uh, according to these ten studies I've selected. The mean age is 34 years, but uh, in some studies, for example, in New Zealand study and then USA study, uh, the average age was, I mean, highest age they have uh, included in the study was 72 years women, and the young was around um, 19 years. So we have to say that, uh, yes, it is 34 years, but then it may come in young men, so also young women, and also in uh, elder women also. 
Regarding ethnicity, um, some studies say um, it is more common in uh, certain uh, ethnicities, for example, Hispanic and um, African American women. But the thing is, it is not very relevant when we talk about uh, ethnicities, but I think um, because of these studies uh, taking any samples, it's just a um, random sample, so we can't say some ethnicity have more prominent than others. For example, African women are more common to have glandless mastitis than um, white, white women. We can't say that. But, but, the, but in these four, 10 studies, these are the numbers actually uh, divided into. <coughs> and uh, what about the clinical presentation? Uh, according to these 10 studies, um, almost 100% of cases, uh, there is uh, a lump presented in the breast that is the most common presentation uh, with pain, breast erythema, nipple inversion, nipple discharge, so all these uh, uh, conditions patient may present. In our case also, these five cases we have done here, uh, patient presented with uh, uh, either painful lumps in the breast, and then they have undergone some uh, incision drainage previously, and then they came back once again, there is another lump. So it goes on like that. So these are the clinical um, presentations. I'm just uh, cutting down the time, sorry for Delay, we, we have started very delayedly, so I'm just to wrapping up. Okay, okay uh, these are clinical presentations. Uh, some, one of the study divided uh, these kind of presentations for, for example, uh, are the right breast is more common or left breast is most common? But there is nothing, uh, I mean, very much difference in that. Uh, bilateral infection and then um, skin inflammation, skin ulceration, these are the most common presentations. For example, breast mass formation is the most common in this study also. So um, these are the mainly main presentations. And radical feature, features, um, uh, according to these 10 studies, hypoechoic mass with collection, pocket flux, 63% patient present with this uh, picture. Uh, focal mastitis, or ductectasia, 50% of cases. So these are the main uh, radiological findings you can, you can, but I will leave that part to Dr. Ant Nazir, because she will be presenting radiological part. Uh, this is also one of the, uh, one of the study presented in this way. Uh, here, total number of cases are 90 cases, but according to the uh, radiological findings, they have divided into, so most common we, we see here is, um, around uh, irregular uh, shaped mass is the most common presentation according to this also. This is 36 cases, that is 43.3% cases. Investigations. Uh, so main thing here we uh, understand, we should understand is the granulomous mastitis is very, very similar to uh, CA breast or inflammatory carcinoma of the breast. So um, that's why we have to differentiate always because nowadays everybody is talking about cancer. Um, these five cases, uh, I mean, since I, I, I joined here, uh, each and every case, that was the most common concern they are, they are, they are having. I mean, we are having a lump, it is chronic, it is um, long time is there. So I think I'm having cancer. That's the main thing patient says, first of all. So um, it is very, very important to differentiate granulomous mastitis from inflammatory carcinoma. That's the important thing. That's why we have to do all these investigations. I mean, radiological investigations, then after that, um, pathological investigations. Here we see um, um, uh, the most important in investigation here we can do is just uh, needle biopsy um, and then uh, gram staining and um, sometimes we do excision biopsy also. So here also I'll say uh, this histopathological findings I'll leave to Dr. Miro to present because he got very interesting um, uh, slides I think. 
Okay, now uh, I'm going to uh, to treatment part. Uh, first of all, there is, uh, since it is described in 1972, but still there are no agreeable uh, treatment protocols introduced to manage Graylum's mastitis. That's a, because there are a lot of variations in this disease. Um, main thing is, as we do here, symptomatic treatment with steroids, our recommendation would be successful. But then um, there are other studies says, no, no, it is not, I mean, steroids may not be very good for all the patients. So you have to avoid um, steroids and then give some um, uh, symptomatic treatment. And then surgical excision is recommended for the cases which are not uh, uh, responding to uh, antibiotic treatment. And then um, later on, I, I just uh, want to present this algorithm. Um, here we say um, one of the studies, uh, this study, actually this is uh, from 2017. So they have uh, suggested this um, uh, pathway, like history and physical examination, then imaging studies, then after that you have to do some kind of uh, histopathology. After that, um, if tissue says, if, if that comes to be granulous mastitis, then uh, you have to um, do more investigations, uh, some investigations to say, to rule out tuberculosis. And then um, if it has come to be the second granulous mastitis, then appropriate uh, treatment to be there. But if it is uh, idiopathic granulous mastitis, then the pathway is quite different. Idiopathic means there is a no we, we, we are not able to find any reason why patients have patient have in this. Idiopathic is the one uh, which is which is we couldn't find we are not able to find any microbiology in it. Uh, we are not seeing any reason why. For example, immunological reaction or maybe uh, some other um, antigen antibody reaction. Those kind of things are called idiopathic um, mastitis. Okay, now if we say it's, if it's idiopathic renal mastitis, then these are the recommendations. Um, you say high risk for corticosteroids, then you have to say if it is yes or no. If no, then you go um, for higher doses of steroid and then a long term follow up. And then if it is um, um, adverse effect is there, then very low dose of steroids. And then we go. Um, uh, taper it down very slowly and then long term follow up. The thing is uh, among all of these studies, um, I have seen very few studies says it completely resolves, but there, there are equivocal response on this, this treatment. But in my experience, uh, um, I would say a wide local excision uh, and then uh, we can close the uh, wound with uh, cleaning and then after that we can give some uh, antibiotic treatment. That is the best thing because I have seen many uh, cases uh, completely uh, recovered from that thing because we have completely removed the granulomatous area and then we closed the wound and then many cases uh, came back that there was good result on that. So that is one of the thing we can, we can follow, I mean, j just a suggestion. <laughs> Okay, here, um, as I said, um, no sweat, but I, I would say this within the few months, as we said, um, we have found these five cases. So it is time to, we have to do some kind of studies. Uh, uh, I believe I, I'm going to just stress on this point because uh, now all the hospitals we are working, we have um, electronic health record systems uh, in our labs, we have pathology reports also in our, it is also electronic. And our, even uh, some hospitals, they have um, uh, clinical records, including uh, clinical findings, including um, investigations done. I mean, this, this huge data database can provide a lot of source and, I mean, for investigations and do some research on that. So that is my recommendation. 
let us do some study, let us study it and then we can recommend better treatment for our patients. Thank you. who is an extremely experienced radiologist. She serves the Maldian public as the head of the Department of Radiology in IGMH with much appreciation for giving her time to pro uh, provide information on the radiological aspect of the clinical issue under the discussion. I would like to give the floor to Dr. Ahmed Nasir. Dr. Ahmed Nasir. talk on radiological approach to a palpable breast lump. So mainly for a radiological breast lump, for an ultrasound is complementary to mammography or palpable lesion in a young woman and to guide biopsy. So as Dr. Ubed mentioned that most of the women who come are of younger age, so first we are doing ultrasound for them here. And when, when, while we do ultrasound, we have to find out whether the patient, uh, the palpable lesion that we see on ultrasound is benign or malignant. So there are certain characteristics for these uh, sort of standardized descriptors for my, uh, ultrasound also now like, like the Birex lexicon where we have certain named descriptors like shape, margin features, orientation, echogenicity, calcification and so all these, uh, you know these are different uh, characterization descriptors of, of the ultrasound findings. So what are the benign features of this? Now benign features, as you can see on the right hand upper corner, uh, on the left upper corner, it has got a well smoothly marginated, well encapsulated lesion, and it is well circumscribed, and it is a homogeneous echo, echo texture. That is just the in, uh, echogenicity of the lesion. And whether the lesion is oriented parallel to the skin surface, whether we have increased vascularity or absence of any suspicious features. Then malignant features is irregular shape as you can see on the corner. This is totally different to the previous one like the benign features and the malignant feature. So irregular shape, purely defined margins, orientation is you know taller than wide lesions. These are just ultrasound you know findings that uh, we see for posterior acoustic shadowing. So this is one. Now coming to granulomatous mastitis, the imaging features are non-specific. There is no real typical feature for granulomatous mastitis and we can either use depending upon the patient's age, either ultrasound, mammogram or MRI. So as the patients are young, I'll just run through some slides where the patients have some sort of, you know, hypoechoic lesion with irregular margins and you know sort of tubular appearances that mimic inflammatory CA. So that is the reason why we need to differentiate whether this lesion is ultrasonographically benign or malignant. And this <coughs> lesion is seen with even lymph nodes. Some, some have loss of fatty hilum and increased vascularity. These are some of the lesions that are, you know, they mimic inflammatory CA and a malignant lesion. 
so it is not clear cut imaging features this if you can see on this also this mastitis show large irregular hypoechoic mass with multiple tubular extensions so we can do if the if the patient is slightly older we can even go for mammogram but mammogram also shows uh, just a uh, you know ill defined mass that is not really specific to anything it doesn't have any malignant features so anyway again we need to take these patients to for ultrasound to see what these lesions are a uh, so for all our patients in mammography in IGMH we do a complementary ultrasound it is essential that for a suspected lesion or even otherwise some le uh, all the suspected lesions that we see we should do either a supplementary or complementary ultrasound for all mammogram patients I am not too sure whether it is followed here but uh, in IGMH we follow that we do for all patients uh, then uh, this is also a irregular mass ill defined there are no specific features so even in breast MRI like you know the lesions are not really specific because uh, it shows that time intensity curve is a grade one sort of so it does not even uh, diagnose that so more for when we come to it here are some of the pictures that I have taken I just run through so granulomatous mastitis has a varied appearance on imaging final diagnosis specific pathologic findings on biopsy so what I want to highlight is actually BIRAD so when we when we do an ultrasound or when we do a mammogram we really have to you know sort of uh, uh, finalize the lesion with what category this BIRADS it comes to as we all know I think most of us in this room we all know what the BIRADS is so the overall assessment and recommend management should reflect the most suspicious feature like suppose if you don't give a BIRADS for ultrasound or if you don't give a BIRADS for mammogram that, as, uh, that leaves the patient you know if the study is incomplete so we definitely we really need to do and uh, if if ultrasound we do and if we feel that you know that patient needs a mammogram or ultras, uh, MRI then we should do it and then combined assessment with the combined assessment we should give a BIRADS score so that the timely management can be done then in between lesions like 3 BIRADS 3 we can have a short interval follow up of 3 months thank you <laughs> Any questions? Any any Many thanks to Dr. Andan Nazir for enlightening us on the radiological aspect of the issue. Our final speaker is pathologist Dr. Mishla uh, Strabik, whose work introducing prognostic and predictive markers for breast cancer has made great contributions in the diagnosis of breast tumors, rare tumors, and unknown primary tumors. Dr. Strabik has uh, more than 40 publications and has given lectures about the immunochemistry for as a tool in personalized cancer treatment. May I now invite Dr. Strabik to take the podium? Okay, thank you very much. So, Red button. Okay. What type? Yeah. What type we can do now? Not this presentation, but.
Okay. Is is this the right presentation? Okay. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you to all guests that you came here to uh, for this presentation of us. On this special day, I welcome you in Tritop Hospital, and uh, I am Dr. Miro, as you heard. Dr. Miro is easy to to pronounce, but the whole uh, name is not that easy. Thank you for trying. It was nice try. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice try. Uh, look what happened. Uh, look what happened in, in this hospital. Uh, this is our first case. My job to, to, tonight is to present this case. Not this case, five cases. And you are here to, to judge are those cases authentic or are not. And uh, we, we will discuss these cases because we feel that this what we uh, encountered in these five months deserves uh, a discussion uh, in a wider, in wider medical, medical community. So this is how it started. This was our first case. A 30 ye years old uh, uh, lady uh, with bilateral breast mass. And this is what Dr. Ubaid sent to me. And this is his, uh, his request for PCR, TB PCR. I called him immediately and I, I asked, why do you want a TB PCR? Because I am in breast pathology for more than 25 years, but uh, this request I never had that someone asked for TB PCR as soon as he says, but here he explains that a TB is actually quite not that rare in, in uh, this region and that there is a good, very good reason why he request this analysis. So I said we will see first if this is really tuberculosis or it's not tuberculosis, does it look like tuberculosis, so then we will decide what are we going to do. So when I saw this, uh, uh, the only thing I knew that I never saw this, although I'm a, a quite, quite a long uh, time in, in pathology of breast, I never saw this. So these are cystic spaces. I thought these are artifacts. And uh, yeah, it, it, it really looks uh, 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 like artifact. So then uh, later, later I saw it's everywhere. Those cystic spaces, granulocytes around cystic spaces, granulocytes, and then histiocytes forming granulomas. So. It was granulomatous <coughs> mastitis, but uh, which type? What caused this mastitis? This was the question. First thing that comes to mind is, uh, is uh, of course, tuberculosis. It's here, but it's typical for tuberculosis. Typical uh, caseous necrosis here. We don't have caseous necrosis. We don't have cystic spaces here. This is sarcoidosis, no necrosis, no neutrophils, no cystic spaces, nothing that would look like uh, this uh, lesion that we have. Uh, vasculitis also doesn't look like, and perhaps <coughs> only this thing, this is leprosy, lepromatous leprosy, with those uh, granulocytes and uh, uh, surrounded with uh, histiocytes and uh, forming granuloma, but without these cystic spaces here. So at the uh, uh, first day, I really didn't know what this uh, lesion is. Then I started to search uh, articles and to search literature. Then I found mm -hmm. this, this uh, situation, this case, absolutely identical. Absolutely identical. Cystic spaces, neutrophils around, neutrophils here. I hope that there is pathologist here. Yeah, only one. <laughs> ah, two, okay. Okay, okay. And then histiocytes forming granuloma. So it's very typical. So it's, you cannot miss it. Once pathologist sees this, he cannot forget it. It's so typical. So what is not impressive is this here. Those, is, those are bacteria. Corinebacterium, 
And here also, Corine bacterium, what is typical for them, that they are found in those cystic spaces, like here and here. But you cannot really say that this is blue, or that this is blue, or that this is blue on gram staining. Some staining is there, but not that nice and not that typical. So I realized that, in fact, this case of Dr. Rubaid is case of cystic neutrophilic granulomatous mastitis caused by Corine bacteria. So this was the, the solution. We were not, but first we, uh, what we had to do to check uh, uh, his suspicion about tuberculosis, so we did. Four times we, we did acid fast staining. It was negative all the time. And later we did twice gram staining. We got something here. It's a little bit bluish. It's in the, real, uh, in the uh, right position in this cystic space. It looks like those published cases. So we concluded it's probably uh, this diagnosis, cystic neutrophilic mastitis caused by coronary bacterium, but we, didn't, we were not sure. We, we, uh, we said it's of unknown origin, but we did mention coronary bacterium. <coughs> Later, we received a report from our ref lab that uh, microbacterium was not, uh, 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 Microbacterium was not de detected, nor any other micro microbacterium, nor tuberculosis, nor any other microbacterium. So we concluded, no tuberculosis, probably not tuberculosis, probably coronary bacterium. Uh, the second case, 43 years uh, old lady, it was initial granul granuloma. It was just starting to organize no cystic spaces here, uh, no neutrophils, just, just granulomas, giant cells, just giant cells and granulomas, granulomas are starting to organize. So this would be perhaps the case that Dr. Rubaid said idiopathic. In, in this case, we didn't prove, we didn't find nothing. Then the third case, this is the third case. Uh, you see how it looks, uh, how it looks uh, microscopically. You see those cystic spaces here. It goes under the skin, makes fistulas uh, uh, on the surface, and goes uh, quite deep. So histologically, what was the most impressive in this case was this. Me macrophages eating uh, lipo, uh, 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 adipose cells, eating fat. This, this uh, is similar thing is published in literature in this uh, granuloma, this, uh, this type of, of, of uh, mastitis. This is described, but not described uh, in the way that we would like. So that is, it is so pronounced, so, uh, so important, because this is what we found everywhere in this tissue. Adipose tissue is under attack of coronary bacterium. Adipose tissue contains this. This is something that perhaps on uh, gram stain gives this impression, perhaps coronary bacterium, perhaps something else. We believe it's coronary bacterium because the rest of Histological picture is absolutely typical. Cystic spaces, granulocytes around, and, and macrophages and histiocytes around everything. And this histological picture, like all other, when we had coronary bacterium involved, is those, those macrophages that are eating adipose tissue, lipophages. Lipophages are everywhere in this condition. <coughs> so this will be the uh, third case. Yeah. In this third case, also we received report for, uh, from our ref lab that 
mycobacteria was not found. Uh, our four kids. In our four kids is in fact very interesting case. Uh, why? Be because in this case, only on the basis of FNA and several granulomatous fossae, this patient received one year of ATT therapy, one year of anti-tuberculosis -tuber therapy for seeing several forces of granuloma. And granuloma can be, we can find granuloma in hundreds of diseases, including tuberculosis, but in this region, granuloma, it looks to me, it seems to me like this, granuloma automatically means tuberculosis, but it's not the case. In many cases, we believe in many cases, it's not tuberculosis, but something else. <coughs> case five, in this case five, this case five is the latest case, actually seven days ago. Again, a lady was treated in 2007, and uh, 11 years later, she again has uh, this redness in, uh, in her breast in the region of, of scar. Uh, and again, we, we did FNA bi biopsy and we found, we found only giant cells. On the, on the basis of several giant cells, we did not conclude that it's about uh, that it's about tuberculosis. We cannot say it's, a, it's tuberculosis. We just say, we can just say on FNA that what we see. We see something that is, we, we suspect it could be granulomatous inflammation, nothing else. So I decided to show uh, also this because in this uh, uh, folliculitis on the scalp, we also found several cystic spaces. We didn't, we didn't find a coronary bacterium. Inside, we only found cystic spaces that to some extent look like this, this, uh, uh, this inflammation in the breast. And this is one in axilla. We also didn't find cystic spaces, but everything else was there except those cystic spaces. So this is just, uh, this is just uh, a mention uh, a mention of these conditions also because they, they look like this inflammation in breast, but actually we didn't, uh, we didn't find uh, coronary bacterium inside. Okay, something about coronary bacterium, I, th I think it deserves to, to be said. Uh, <coughs> coronary bacterium is a genus of bacteria, gram-positive, aerobic bacilli, rod-shaped or club-shaped, it's uh, 44 four, uh, strains of coronary bacterium. Habitat is everywhere, everywhere. It's uh, considered to be skin flora or flora in uh, mucosa. Uh, history, it's found on domestic animals and the first pathological findings were described in domestic animals, in wild animals. And first time uh, disease that is caused uh, disease that uh, with the name granulomatous mastitis is described first in 2003. First case in United States in 2011, the name uh, it got in 2011 also. Uh, and I will discuss a little bit, uh, a little bit also uh, with uh, uh, publications like Dr. Ubaid, and this is one that I found very informative, perhaps the best that I've read. So, uh, in this case, you see objective of this publication is to, de to determine whether this type of mastitis that you saw, that I showed you, two of them typical, are connected with coronary bacterium and should treatment be directed toward coronary bacterium or not? And conclusion is that yes, therapy should be directed toward coronary bacterium. Okay. So our cases should be treated with something ag against coronary bac bacteria. So then again, I will repeat what Dr. Ubaid already said, Hispanic woman, Hispanic woman, Maori, 
people, Pacific Island origin, some, uh, uh, some uh, new studies uh, don't see this difference. They said no difference by ethnicity. And I would like uh, uh, to, uh, you to show you nine cases of this mastitis is in two years find in Center for Disease Control in Indianapolis. So a relatively small number of cases comparing with cases that we found here. Uh, so treatment, I will, I will, I will jump uh, uh, to treatment, tetracyclines, tetracyclines, lipophilic tetracycline derivative, these, these two, minocycline and doxycycline, why? Because they are lipophilic and this coronary bacterium goes in adipose tissue, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's logical. <coughs> and it's used, and it, it works. <coughs> so I would like also to, to repeat several information that you already heard. <coughs> Age, in this study, 33 years. Uh, pa patients over 50 years, zero. Not a single patient was over 50 years. Most of them were Hispanic. Uh, Noliparos, zero. Every single patient had, had uh, uh, kids and, and was breastfeeding. E every single patient that we have and that they have. Okay. Uh, and in 60 out of 19 cases, they find coronary bacterium inside. So this is very important. They found coronary bacterium. Let's summarize this a little bit. Clinical thinking, how are we going to implement those publications and th those cases that we had? What are we going to think about those cases? How are we going to treat our patients? What is our approach? If the age is older than 50, probably not coronary bacteria, because not, not a single case is published like this. If they, if they didn't breastfeed, probably not, probably not uh, uh, this mastitis. If Breastfeeding stopped in more than 10 years because also it's within 10 years if you have this inflammation. If it's unilateral, that probably could be tumor. The opposite case, if the, 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 the patient is in childbearing age, if she uh, was breastfeeding, if she stopped, uh, stopped breastfeeding in less than 10 years, if it's bilateral, then probably inflammation. So this would be uh, 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 the way of thinking in these cases. So procedures, what, what, what procedures would we uh, have then? If mastitis, imaging, imaging can give us information about is it abscess or is it mass of unclear origin? Then in, the, in this case, core needle biopsy, no FNA uh, uh, biopsy, but core needle biopsy we need more tissue, then uh, we could have mastitis, granulomatose, or we can have cancer. Cancer goes to treatment, and granulomatose, mastitis can go either way. I said lipophilic antibiotics, uh, uh, high dose prednisolone therapy, like Dr. Rubai said, surgery in any, in any uh, uh, order. It, it could be first surgery, then added. Uh, uh, something in any order. So it's not published, there is not publications, but we have some cases, we have some publications, we can try, and like Dr. Rubaid said, we can investigate and we can, uh, we can compare our results and we can follow our patients and we can find out how to treat them. Uh, for pathologists, let's say for pathologists, every pathologist, when, when he sees this, this is pus. This is pustulous inflammation. So intuitively, I would never treat pustulous inflammation only with corticosteroids, but first of all with antibiotics. And in these cases, in initial cases, perhaps with immunosuppressants. But this is something that we need to investigate. We need to, to, to have numbers. We need to put those cases together to have numbers, to make statistics, to, to draw conclusions, and so on. Uh, in 
Uh, do we need histopathology for the analysis of this, uh, of, of this uh, mastitis? Yes, we need. Where facilities for histopathological evaluation do not exist, then in these cases, perhaps we can rely on FNAC. But in other cases, perhaps we should do uh, histopathology. Histopathology for breast, perhaps for scalp, for axilla, for other subcutaneous areas because coronary bacterium resides in adipose tissue and we don't know exactly uh, 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 in how much cases he is involved in causing, in causing inflammations. We know for breast and for scalp, but we don't know for other areas. Con conclusion uh, here would be clinicians should be aware of coronary bacterium because I don't think that we are aware uh, enough. At least, at least some cases that we thought it's tuberculosis are not tuberculosis. Uh, this type of mastitis can be easily detected by histopathologist. Once he sees it, he will not forget it because it's so typical. Treatment options should be guided by histopathology because if not histopathology, then it's going to be tuberculosis. Then it's going to be one year of ATT treatment because of one granuloma. And I don't think it's okay. It's okay. I think it should be guided on, on detailed histopathological analysis. Once we, have, uh, 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 once we have granuloma, we can say this is tuberculo tuberculosis, this is coronary bacterium, this is something else. But for histopathologists, it's very easy to make difference between those types of gran uh, granuloma. So we also think that this has some importance for public health of Maldives, to, di to uh, which extent, I, I don't know. And uh, this slide is actually a slide that I wanted to say that we are willing to help in histopathological analysis. And this is our lab. I think it's beautiful. I'm showing this lab <laughs> all the time. I don't know how many times I, I've showed this. And the, today, perhaps especially because most of you are surgeons. And this is cryostat. We, we do, uh, on this cryostat, we do extempore or so-called fresh frozen sections or intraoperative diagnostics. Perhaps you will need intraoperative di diagnostics someday. And we have this equipment. So. This would be my message. Let's it investigate, evaluate, and improve together, just like Dr. Ubaid said. We need more cases. We need analysis about th those cases. Uh, 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 and we need statistics. And we need e evaluation, and we investigation, evaluation, and everything. We need those numbers and so that we can fight this disease together. OK, that's it. <laughs> No. Okay. Questions for us today? Yeah. If you just say something you want. <laughs> Any questions? No questions? Okay. I have a question actually. Yeah. Uh, I myself is a macrobiologist, just an idea. I wanted to ask that how you have uh, the standard that is a standard system for any Yeah, yeah, because of uh, a look. This is histopathology. I knew that you are going to ask this question. <laughs> I knew exactly, but this is histopathology. We are morphologists. So the, in this case, there is not a single agent except coronary bacterium that can cause this type of 
histopathological findings. So when you see cystic neutrophilic granuloma, you don't even need to see microbacteria uh, uh, inside. You have this three, uh, 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 these three parts of the name of this mastitis, so you can say it's coronary bacterium. We tried. We tried really. We used gram staining five or six times. Gram staining is very unstable. It's very uncertain. Yeah, thank you. Very unstable. Yeah. This is exactly what Dr. Huda and I were talking about, about unstable. I said, oh my God, are those people going to believe me when I tell them that we had beautiful picture on the day one and that those bacteria vanished on day 10. <laughs> I saw this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I saw this. Yeah, yeah. These are the pictures that we took on the day one, and after day ten, we didn't have uh, the same picture anymore. So it's very difficult to get some staining, and once you get it, it disappears. Yeah, no, no. On the basic, no, no, no. Absolutely not. On the basic, I, I'm not microbiologist. I'm histopathologist. When I see this, this, this morphology. It's so typical and never uh, uh, ever was published that something can look like this and not be being by coronary bacterium, uh, caused by coronary bacterium. So for me, for me, I don't even need to see uh, uh, this ba bacteria. I just need to see so specific, so typical uh, histological picture. And for me, this is this, is this type of, of, uh, of mastitis. <coughs> Thank you for your question. <coughs> First of all, thank you for your lectures, for your speakers. And my question is that since you say the coronary chain is mostly found in domestic animals, yeah. so what are the routes of transmission from I don't know. animals to human beings? <laughs> again, <laughs> again, <laughs> the, it, there, there is the answer. What are the. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, for the first question, I know if it's raised, then in those cases, prolactin, then in those cases, it favors also uh, granulomatous mastitis against tumor. So it's not tumor, it's mastitis. Why? I don't know. Again, but what I've seen is granuloma around, around uh, 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 structures of breast, around canaliculi and, and uh, intralobular. Granulomas are also there. This could have some, uh, some, uh, 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 some consequences in prolactin raising. But which mechanism exactly, I'm not sure. Uh, a true cut, a true cut, perhaps true cut, I would, I would like uh, as a histopathologist, uh, I would like, like at least core biopsy, at least core biopsy, because what you need uh, to see in, in this biopsy, you need to, to see a lot of macrophages, lipophages, uh, you, you need to see granuloma, granuloma, if you hit it, you will see it, uh, or giant cells, uh, so uh, whatever method increases the chances to see those typical uh, uh, typical uh, 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 formations, 
for diagnosis, the better. So the bigger material, the better. So this is uh, uh, what I would uh, suggest. Uh, although many, many published uh, 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 cases, especially uh, one I, I've noticed that Dr. Rubais showed, they are based only on FNA. So in those cases, I would trust, I wouldn't trust uh, uh, too much. And he also said it was idiopathic. Yes, it was idiopathic, but it was based on FNA. So it was not based on, uh, on uh, histo histology. So I would recommend always as much material as possible. So we can have real diagnosis and perhaps uh, some uh, uh, real decision. Is it tuberculosis or is coronary bacterium? It's a big decision. So big difference. So for, for this reason, I would always recommend as big biopsy as, as possible. Now, um, let me say a story of five cases. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I did, uh, yeah, same way. I have, because they, ca they came after some treatment. Actually, uh, two of the cases underwent multiple INDs, incision drainage, multiple times, and then uh, patient come back once again with the recurrent infection. So, um, when they came up, so they also exhausted. So, I said, I will do wide local excision. Uh, so wide local excision was done, cleaned, and then I put a, um, a suction drain and then closed. Yeah. So um, one of the case, uh, after two months, came back with recurrent. There was another small foci, but not at the area of the excision, but the other side of the breast, uh, same breast, but the other side, uh, had a small lump. So they got um, very prepared, so they asked me to go to abroad, so I just filled the form. Another <laughs> 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 uh, other four cases uh, actually very well recovered. Uh, till now they are not having any recurrence, but I don't know, God knows what will bring us. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm just too hoping that they will recover completely. Uh, I didn't give yes, uh, I, I didn't start steroid. Um, uh, I just uh, gave uh, antibiotics and then um, they, they have recovered very well. Till now they are following up, so hope it will recover. <coughs> Yeah, this, this is a very good question because uh, here, here the problem is if you don't send enough tissue to histopathology and you cannot diagnose the case when it starts, right? So um, question here is when are you going to do white local excision? Um, is it from the beginning or first you do core biopsy and then send for histopathology? If they come, then you go for kind of conservative treatment for the for the structure but here um, because this uh, steroid therapy is not very well established uh, thing we, we are used not to give it because I, I still see I mean during these uh, literature reviews I have seen many authors I mean many researchers they they defer uh, steroid steroid treatment they said uh, it may cause some other complaints other problems and then many cases came back also. <coughs> so it is not also well established uh, treatment as I say. So um, I think uh, from our experience, um, uh, wide local excision with uh, treatment, with uh, antibiotic treatment is very, very good. So um, yeah, that, that's what we are doing. You have a lot of cases. Yeah. You have histological, histological uh, material. Yes. That's great. The, um, in some books, they have described that some patients prefilling to granulomous function. They have uh, duct tape. Mm -hmm. Other 
Uh, I didn't understand exactly. Ah, dactectasia, yeah. Yeah, very logical the, that you said, but y you said in books, or perhaps in books, is the in the older books. This case that you just described, we had today. Doctor Oscar and I had this case today. Uh, I, I I I I've seen uh, cytology. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, uh, manage to to make uh, slides out of it. Uh, he did he did a biopsy, and we got. Pus. Uh, it was duct ectasia on both breasts, and both breasts were involved. Case from today from Dr. Oscar. And it was pus uh, was going out. Once he put uh, the needle inside, you could tell this better. Once he put needle inside, it was pus going out. So in both, in, in both breasts, we, we had this canalicular system dilated. But it didn't mean that something went out of this system and caused immunological reaction. It was the consequences of what was happening. It was inflammation, uh, scarring, obstruction, uh, then uh, uh, dilatation, then pus, uh, pus formation. So this is what we, what we saw. Under the microscope, uh, what, what I've seen is uh, millions of macrophages that were eating, eating uh, uh, adipose tissue. And uh, for me, uh, this is almost enough to make a diagnosis of some granulomatous inflammation. I think in the literature also it's mentioned that the same thing. Is this a periductal mastitis? Mm -hmm. It is uh, considered a uh, ductus loss or there is a foreign material with and then starts uh, it is described, um, but it doesn't mean it is infected. It's, it's not a bacteria causing that, as you said. It's an infected. Another, another cause. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us something about uh, the number of cases, perhaps, that you have over there? We have at, uh, this year also we had uh, four cases. Four cases this year. So this is very, very interesting. I, I, I hope you, you, we agree that this is very interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, look, I, 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 I really hope that we will exchange our cases. We will give you our cases. You will give us uh, uh, your cases so we can review all those cases, perhaps uh, together to exchange experience and material. And and uh, start count the numbers. So the numbers are unusually high. Uh, if, if you notice, perhaps, yeah, uh, perhaps, uh, yeah. It always says coronary bacterium or some other gram-positive bacilli. This is some phrase they often use because it's not uh, easy to say it's coronary bacterium. You need cultures. Those cultures are very specific and very sensitive. So you cannot be certain on the basis of, of uh, on the level that we are doing this uh, right now. PCR is not uh, of much help because coronary bacterium is everywhere. Those cultures are very sensitive and they need a special treatment of, from professions, not from us, histopathologists, so we cannot be, be certain. They always say coronary bacteria or some other gram-positive bacilli. So this is some phrase. So the, it, it, I, I, I said only in two cases I would say coronary bacterium is very uh, much important, but in those three cases I, I cannot say this. I can just just guess, just like everyone else. But it is some type of granulomatous mastitis. Uh, 
but what uh, it's uh, uh, what caused it, I don't know. I think no more questions. I'll conclude. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, so before we wrap up this session, I would like to thank Treetop Hospital for support, uh, sponsoring this event and acknowledge the support it provides to such sponsorship for the medical community in Maldives. Thank you also for our distinguished audience for taking the time to participate in this uh, session. I wish you all the way good night. Thank, thank you. Nice, sir. <laughs>